My name is Courtney Colson, a female to male to female detransitioner, and on this channel we try to figure out what the hell is wrong with me. And I know what's wrong with me right now is 2022 is trying to murder me, and it's doing a pretty good job of it. Honestly, I've never had a worse year, worse period of my life, and I was gonna wait until Ivy, my car, was back home, I could do a video with her, but that's gonna take some time, and I think a lot of people really wanna know what's going on with me, and I've just, I've felt awful lately, and I don't really know who I can talk to, I just, I don't feel right, I don't even really feel like talking to anyone. So here I am talking to the entire world for who knows how many years, decades, centuries to come, but look, it's cheaper than therapy. <laughs> so if you've been following me on the YouTube community section where I post all my updates or on my Instagram, you'll know I've been having a time. It's just one thing after the other, honestly. January was fine. January started off nice. I had my birthday, 2nd of January. Fun fact, I'm born 10 days before Hal 9000 of 2001 A Space Odyssey. His birthday is January the 12th, mine's January the 2nd. And I had a Miami Vice themed birthday party with my friends at a place called Neon Palms. It was very cool. And my mum took me and Ivy to the beach, so I got to drive around with the top down, got to enjoy convertible girl summer, if only for one day of the summer, but look, I'll take what I can get. And February, early February, I got my Pfizer dose, which didn't agree with me at all. Uh, I talked about it in my last video, so I won't repeat all of it here, but um, yeah, just when I went from lying to sitting or sitting to standing, I felt like my head was going to explode. I wasn't in a lot of pain, but it was a very worrying symptom and everything I looked up said, oh yeah, you should probably go to the hospital. It turns out nothing wrong with me as far as I can tell, but I don't know, I haven't really felt right since then, but it's hard to know, Is does the vaccine have anything to do with that or is it just all the other shit I've gone through in the past? few months. So after that, I was recording a podcast, 60 Seconds to Comply, which is my Robocop Moves by Minute podcast. Go check it out. So Simon and I hear this big explosion. It's on my end. We record online. And we we're halfway through an episode. And my last words would have been, is this a real tragedy or is it a goof? <laughs> and kind of fitting, I suppose. But yeah, I go, oh, hang on. I'm going to go and investigate that because I'm in a kind of dodgy area so it could be anyone doing who knows what out there and open my front door and the power pole outside is on fire so I have to call the fire department and that goes on for a few hours and then I'm without power for about 24 hours after that so it's just <laughs> Okay, uh, okay, that's that's two out of three of the emergency departments. But, oh, well, that's that's th that happens. That's life. I'm lucky things weren't much worse. No. Then a couple weeks later, I'm, I go out for about, I don't know, three hours, maybe, in the middle of the day, middle of a work day. I go for a driving lesson, and I come home. And I look out the window of the train, as I always do, look at my house. And the garage door is open. And there's no car inside. And I play this in my head over and over again. I just kept looking at it going, that's... No, that's the neighbor's house. You know, we're sort of a duplex kind of thing. So the houses look identical. And there's many times I look across and go, is that my house or is that my neighbor's? And I sort of slowly you know, pull my earphone out and I stand up and I mean I've got the mask on and the sunglasses and everything that no one can see my facial expression but I just quietly say someone stole my car and then the dude in front of me you know in the seat across from me just goes oh that sucks <laughs> no one cared 
So I, I'm, I'm walking and then I'm running as fast as I can in 80s sling back heels <laughs> to my house. And there's, there's the doors open leading into the house. And then I look into my bedroom. There's underwear strewn on the floor. I'm still not quite processing it. But then I get into my bedroom and I see the glass broken and just shattered everywhere. So my bedroom door slash window, it's just all glass. There's no security mesh. There's nothing on it. And I've told the landlord that this is a problem. And they actually had a guy come out and do a quote. I found out in hindsight, he was actually only going to put uh, a, a security screen on the part of the door that opens. So there would have been a huge glass area that you could just, I don't know, get anything in my backyard, smash that open. So still half ass measures. Now, apparently, they've ordered a full security screen. But yeah, they were slowly trying to secure the area. And yeah, it's too late. I... I saw that glass everywhere and I just screamed. You know, I am a very stoic person until now. Um, my story's long and complicated, so if you're new here, just, I don't you have to watch the whole series before you get to this point. But I used to have emotional analgesia where I couldn't feel emotional pain. I didn't really feel emotions at all. And only in the past year or so have I slowly started to have feelings and my God, I, I've really been wrestling with them lately and I don't know. In some ways, I like the person I've become. I think it's important to have emotions, to be a human being, to relate to others, to just live like a normal person, I guess. I, I was really missing out on this huge aspect of humanity at the same time it's just fucking inconvenient i don't want it what's the point <laughs> um but yeah i just lost it and i just snapped and i don't think i've been okay since then so i immediately call the police and uh they arrive and i don't know 45 minutes to an hour later Talk to my neighbors, the ones over here didn't hear anything, the one over here didn't answer the door at first, and then he came over and he was chatting with me, saying, oh yeah, this has happened all the time, and these guys, they'll fly drones over our houses, and I'm very close to a train station, which you can probably hear trains in the background, and it's very convenient for me, getting to work, all of that, but it does mean that dickheads are going to get on the train, hop off at the end of the line, which is what this one is, and uh, start looting houses, and then just take off again, leaving no trace. Well, at least they thought so. I'll get to that in a minute, though. Next person I call is my mother, and I don't know why, because she's always going to disappoint me. She's always going to frustrate me. But yeah, I call her, and I can just I can barely breathe. I I am just hyperventilating. I am sobbing. I haven't cried since I was a little about under the age of 10, very certain it was prepubescent. Never cried in my adult life, but definitely made up for that now. And yeah, called my mom. She's like, oh, calm down, calm down. And she just fixates on the car. Oh, you're obsessed over this stupid car. Why do you care? Actually, a lot of things were stolen. So uh, PlayStation 3 which belonged to my friend Alex, because I borrowed it because I want to do a Metal Gear Solid podcast called Metal Girl Solid. My PlayStation 4, all my games, all my Blu-rays. I hadn't even watched The Shining yet. I just bought that the other week. My laptop. So making podcasts and videos has been really challenging. I'm using my mum's old laptop, and I had to upgrade the hard disk drive to a solid state drive, which seems to help somewhat. It's still a very old laptop. He didn't take my DSLR camera, thankfully. They're apparently very hard to move because the information for that particular model, it's got, you know, the serial number, that's all baked into every photo you take. I'm kind of paranoid now because every time I wash my bedding, something bad happens. I, I ended up in hospital. I, my house is burgled. But yeah, I'd wash my sheets, which actually worked in my favor that time 
because it was just a mattress and so there's glass all over that but i could just vacuum that up but i'm still finding bits of glass in that bed right to this day i mean what's that two months later i've washed my bed twice three times since then i haven't even talked about losing ivy yet but you know he took my underwear specifically g-strings the sexy ones you know not just the ones i wear every day he stole one of each pair of my earrings so i mean at least i have some earrings but he he didn't take a pair of any of them he took one so i got a heap that are just useless to me and useless to him it's just so selfish and so stupid uh my there's these pearl and gold ones that my grandmother gave me recently you know beautiful vintage earrings i've got one great what good does that do me um but yeah the biggest most devastating thing was losing my car i moved into this place because it has a garage so that she would be secure didn't matter i there is uh, you can see there there's the deadbolt on top and then there's the other lock and I never bothered locking either of them. I never really thought about security. I've never dealt with any kind of burglary. I don't know. I've just been living in fairly safe neighborhoods my whole life. I just... Because it doesn't occur to me to hurt someone in that way. To really violate someone's space and break into their house and, and do such awful things. It, I just didn't think people were capable of that. Maybe that's incredibly naive, but I just didn't think that sort of thing happened. So the police get here and they take a report. I contact all my connections, all my friends, everyone in the car clubs, sharing photos of Ivy, saying to keep a lookout. I mean, but more than anything, I just didn't think that Ivy was the kind of car people would steal. She's vintage, she's a manual car. She's a Saab. There aren't that many Saabs on the road. She's green, she's got bright gold stripes, a gold grill. She, you could spot her from a mile away. She's the only one of her kind in the world. She's the only car that looks like that. So I don't know what this dickhead thought he was going to do. It's not a particularly valuable car. Saabs are at a point now where, yeah, they just entered vintage, but they're not super valuable. You can get them for less than five grand. So even if you sold it for parts, you wouldn't really get much. All, all her value is sentimental. She means the whole world to me. That car is my everything. All I care about is getting my license and driving that car by myself. That is it. And this shitter just came out of nowhere and took her from me. It feels like a rape. It feels like a violation to both of us. So I'm posting photos on Reddit, Facebook, everywhere, and people actually do recognize the car because that weekend, I think it was Monday she was stolen, Saturday I took her out for a drive, a friend of mine that I met at Cars and Coffee took me for a driving lesson and he wanted to help me take Ivy to the test because I think my biggest problem is just that I'm using cars that are totally different, that I'm not that comfortable with, that I don't have a connection with. So I know that if I did a driving test with Ivy, I'd be fine. So people had actually seen it that weekend. Oh yeah, I have, I've seen it. Uh, someone was driving it around on Saturday. Yeah, that was that was me. That's, that's fine. Uh, so thankfully the police found Ivy within six hours. And that was the hardest six hours of my life. I wouldn't say it's the longest, because it really did just pass by like nothing. It, it was, I wasn't even fully there. I was just in shock. So I talked to a friend of mine on Instagram and she was really nice. She's been through trauma as well and she just knew the right things to say. Whereas my mum just focused on, you got to get over your obsession with this car. And she didn't really seem to sympathize at all. She just wanted me to, oh, well, you got to calm down because, well, see, afterwards she made this excuse of, oh, no, I was just worried about you hyperventilating. Yeah, but the way you you did it didn't seem like that. It seemed like she, I was just annoying and I was inconvenient. 
real estate agent sent over someone to replace the glass door almost immediately, so that was good. And then I was just sort of sitting there, not knowing to what to do with myself. Uh, and it was a, it was about the time I normally eat, only eat one meal a day, and that was about the time that I would normally would have. And I was just so nauseous and stressed, and I, I couldn't, but yeah, managed to have a meal at least. And then I felt a little better, slightly. I've noticed, though, that every time I have an emotion now, it triggers an inflammatory response. So if I'm upset or stressed or whatever, my whole body feels like it's on fire. So that's wonderful. So not only am I having to deal with emotions for the first time and no one can give me instructions on how to do that, I'm also in pain, physically. I won't say that emotional pain is worse than physical pain, but... It is a lot more disruptive. It really is very distracting, and it's awful, and I hate it, and I don't want it anymore. And I was kind of hoping, because I've had you know, a lot of inflammation in my body lately. I'm really sensitive to all foods again. You know, I'm on the carnival diet, and I was doing fine. I was taking probiotics. I was becoming more resistant to non-animal-based foods. But then after the burglary, just, I guess it's stress. I, I'm super sensitive to everything, uh, mosquito bites as well. I mean, I've always swelled up a lot when I got mosquito bites, but lately, yeah, just nothing I take stops the itching. So, yeah, I think my whole body is just in a catastrophic state. But yeah, just before the police called me and said we found Ivy... I was just sitting there on the couch, just sobbing, just sobbing harder than I ever have in my whole life. I just couldn't stop and I couldn't see a future without this car. It just felt so cruel that we'd only been together eight months and hadn't even got my license yet. I, I didn't know the joy of driving her around whenever I wanted, wherever I wanted. I Her build day... Well, we don't know a specific build day, but we know her build month is March. So I wasn't with her at all her entire build month. I actually did buy her some presents, a new head unit, a new badge, a few other things, but... Fuck me, I guess. When they called me, I, I felt so much relief and... The police said, oh yeah, it's just one of the tires is busted. She's fine other than that. Well, hmm. they didn't know the full story. But it, thankfully it wasn't too much worse than that. So at the time I was only working Wednesday through Friday. Now I'm working Tuesday through Friday. And I'm glad that I had that Tuesday off because I needed to just rest. I was not functioning Ivy goes to a police impound lot and they say, well, we're just waiting for forensic analysis. You can't have the car back yet. They got a dust for prints and all that. Okay, so wait a week. Then they say, well, it's waiting for a uh, sharps test and making sure there's no needles or anything in there. Okay, so wait another week. And then finally they release the car. Well, <laughs> they release it, but then they lose the form for that. So a whole weekend passes. I call up Monday, say... So is it at my insurance company's mechanic to evaluate the car, you know, to see if it's a write-off or if they'll cover the damages, whatever. Uh, they say, oh, no, it's still here. We haven't sent it over yet because we don't have the form. Um, but I did, while she was at the towing center, I did go up and visit her. And they showed me what she looked like. And it was so upsetting. And the worst thing is that the guy who, so uh, you can't just walk out into the parking lot area that they have. Uh, this guy takes one in this little electric golf cart out to see the car. And it's pretty dire out there. I'm looking at some cars that have just been completely set on fire, crushed to bits, just, it, it's carnage. And then I get to Ivy, the very end, and... I mean, she doesn't look too bad. She's got these bright green patches on her. That's from the forensic dust. She looks a little dirty, but okay, not too bad. Le left rear tire is busted. It's very interesting. No one can tell me why this is. So the burglar busted the back left wheel, 
replaced it with the spare. He actually put that wheel back in to the boot. Took everything else out that was in the boot, but he put the wheel in there. Not sure what he was planning on doing with that. And then he busted that wheel too. And no one can tell me, well, how did he manage to break the same side? And I get into Ivy and it's a, it's summer still. And it's so hot. Like just touching the door handle was really hot. The leather seats were burning me. I couldn't even sit without putting some kind of uh, canvas covering down. Uh, which thankfully, yeah, I had these canvas, this canvas fabric I bought to make her some car seat covers. So thankfully those were still in the car. One packet of it anyway. Which turns out to just be enough. So. <laughs> but yeah, it was devastating to just look at her in that state that he he had the keys. That's the thing. In my kitchen drawer, you pull out the cutlery drawer and then underneath is a little gap. And that's where I put the keys. I thought, that's a really good spot. Who would think to look there? Turns out, this fucking dickhead. And he... Then, even though he had the keys, he hot-wired her. There's a bit of wire hanging out under her steering wheel. And then just proceeded to cause absolute senseless vandalism. He took the logbooks, he took the Haynes manual, he busted the central console lid. Why? That wasn't in your way. That wasn't doing anything. Um, he, they had to drill the ignition out because this shitter had somehow just forced the key in there so damn hard we couldn't turn the, the ignition on that was this that was the most heartbreaking thing i'm sitting there and i'm trying to just i want to hear that engine i want to hear that she's okay that silence was just deafening and i couldn't get her out of reverse she was just stuck they, they actually pulled the guy over they were driving her pulled him over and said Oh, yeah, I don't know. I just found the car and started driving it. Yeah, that's still theft, though. So I don't know how that excuse was going to help you in any particular way. And for a while there, I was thinking, oh, you know, Ivy's always trapped in this garage. She doesn't get to go out much. I'm sure she's just having fun. and She'll be back home soon. It'll be fine. It's going to be fine. No. No, poor thing has been violated. The worst, I think... I don't know why, but the thing that really upset me the most was I opened up the boot. One of the struts, you know, that helped to hold the boot up was snapped off. So I lift up the boot and one of the struts, you know, the thing that holds the boot up or trunk, if you will, wherever you're from, it's broken. That would have taken a lot of force. He would have had to go out of his way just to beat her up for no reason. I wonder, does this guy know me? This seems really vengeful. This feels so targeted. And the police themselves said, he knows that you weren't home. In a small window, three hours, he knew you weren't home in the middle of the day. He knew where to find the keys. And he took a car that has nothing but sentimental value. So it does seem incredibly suspicious. And they've caught the guy, but they won't tell me anything about him legally. They can't. But you know what? If someone does that, I don't think they have a right to privacy. I'm sorry. But you violated my privacy in the most profound way. Why do you get to have your privacy? I should know your name, your face. I should know your fucking blood type. In the boot, there's this bag thing that holds the convertible roof when it folds down. And that had been slashed open. That's a really hard thing to replace. But I just thought, what did you expect to find in there? You can't actually access it from any other point. Did you think I'd hidden drugs in there? Do I look like I do drugs? I just don't get the logic. There is no logic. People like that are worse than animals. I mean, honestly, think about a dog or a cat. The worst they can do is not that. The, an animal can't cause that level of destruction, that level of emotional devastation, that sense of violation. An animal cannot do that. So this piece of shit is less than an animal. 
and yet I don't get to know who he is. But at least he's arrested, so I hopefully that means he's not going to come back after me. But I'm seriously thinking about moving. I've only been here since November, and I got a year long lease. But yeah, I it's a lot of stress to move. It's very hard to find anything with the housing market the way it is right now, especially with a garage or any kind of carport. That's very rare. I mean, I could move into a share house, maybe, but. It's just, it's a lot of additional stress, and I've just gone through all this stress. So, finally, I get Ivy back. The, I tell the mechanic uh, that works for my insurance company, you know, this car is everything to me. If you can find a way not to write it off, please do. Just, you know, omit certain things that need to be repaired. I can handle a lot of the repairs myself. And, I mean, he obviously didn't know what the hell he was doing. He said, you know, he said, I'll try. But he ended up saying, oh, it's going to be $8,000 worth of repairs. And he couldn't even get the car started. So he had no way of knowing what was wrong with the car. So, you know, I wait a whole month to be told by Budget Direct. Well, actually, I had to call them. I was with Budget Direct. I had to call them and say, so what is going on with this car? You haven't said anything, but that mechanic called me on his own accord saying, have they given you an answer? So, you know, they finally say it's a write-off, but it's a repairable write-off. So that basically means it is repairable, but we don't want to spend $8,000 because your car's only worth five and a half. So I take that five and a half thousand, I take the car, uh, I pay them $300 to then have my car back. It's fucking stupid. And... Then I have her towed to my mechanic, uh, Keith McCracken, they're the Saab people around here. And, well, I actually call up Budget Direct again and say, so am I, I can still use roadside assistance, can I get my car towed to my mechanic now? And this other woman, so she didn't deal with me the first time, she says, oh no, it belongs to the salvage now, it's not your car. And I just, my heart fell out of my chest, like, whoa, 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 no, 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 I definitely, I, I paid for this car, it's my fucking car, I own it outright, and she went, oh, hang on, I'll just put you on hold, I'll figure it out, so I'm just sitting there, just fucking white knuckling it, and then finally she gets back to me, and says, oh yeah, no, it is yours, but you can't tow it, because it doesn't fall under your policy, blah, 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 anyway, so Keith gives me his tow truck driver's number, I call him, and that's all sorted, and then they get back to me in the next couple of days and they say, uh, wheels are busted. The, we have to drill the ignition to get the keys out. Uh, so now we can get her out of reverse. Gearbox seems pretty fucked, but that thing was on its last legs anyway. So in a way, the write-off has been a good thing. I mean, you know, so far, fingers crossed, there aren't any huge hidden expenses, but the gearbox had been repaired a couple of times before that it had always given me grief and apparently an older well older subs they're all older subs now aren't they but yeah in subs they always have that issue for whatever reason they're very well made otherwise okay it's just something with manual gearboxes linkage is just not great but you know it's a 25 26 year old car so what, what do you expect I haven't really looked at anything else, but I, I had a, a friend in a, another Saab club say, oh, I'll send you the Haynes manual, I'll send you the strut for the boot, I'll send you the console, lid, you know, a few other little things here and there, so that I can repair those things myself. Beauty, thanks, and that was all free, amazing. Um, and yeah, it's just that boot pouch thing, which I don't know how integral that is. But I've been able to turn the car on, try and pull the roof back, see what happens. Because there's all these sensors in there, and it looks like he has cut those wires as well. So, uh, that's where we're at not, right now. I really did want to wait until everything was all sorted and I had some kind of conclusion to this story. But it's just been going on and on and on, and my life has just been falling apart ever since. I've had just intense anxiety about the whole thing, you know, nightmares about 
the house being broken into again. I bought a security camera and that helps a little bit. So at least I can just check in on the house at any moment. I I wasn't sleeping well. I was taking valerian root. I didn't have to take any sort of heavy medication. But yeah, valerian root tablets to help me sleep. And just, you know, exhausted all the time. Didn't really feel like doing anything. Couldn't think of anything else. My whole life is Ivy. And I was always thinking of every worst case scenario. Things that probably would never have happened in real life. But just so paranoid that we're star-crossed lovers and every shitter in the world is trying to stand between us and I was just going to get a call one day and say, oh uh, yeah, uh, sorry, we, we towed the wrong car, we scrapped the wrong car, we, we've, we've totaled Ivy, uh, or they've just decided, uh, it's a write-off and you can't have the car back, or just, yeah, just every worst possible scenario. It was, it was a long time waiting to get some kind of resolution, finally, you know, I'm getting a sense of control back that she's being repaired now, she's in good hands, I get to see her once a week. Uh, every Monday I watch old sci-fi movies with my brother, so far it's been 2001 A Space Odyssey and Logan's Run, but he lives near where my mechanic is, so when I'm going past there I just you know, swing by, have a look, have a chat with Keith. And uh, he told me to repair the wheel that had been damaged. It was going to be like $700. So I went, okay, I'm going to go tracking down some parts. I'll see what I can do. So I got a whole new set of four wheels, four tires, $350. So great. And maybe I'll have some spares out of that. So I don't think this is going to cost that much. $700 to get the ignition and gearbox started. If there's anything else after that, they don't know. They're waiting on a clutch to arrive. Right now, that's the biggest delay is this motherfucker burned the shit out of that clutch. He obviously did not know how to drive a manual. So every time he was changing it, he's just slamming that thing down and holding it and just, oh God, I don't even want to think about it. But it's amazing to me that for six hours he was driving around no one called the cops. No one thought that was suspicious. I didn't have a lot of fuel in there. So there's probably security footage of that. But going back to the day of the, the incident, I went up to the train station and I asked the security guard, are there any cameras that face my house? Is there any way at all I could maybe have that footage or give it to the police? And the guy went, nah, there's nothing that faces the road there. Anyway, I go back home. But half an hour later, he knocks on my door and says, I just double checked the security footage. We do have a new camera facing your house. And they did find footage of the guy. He walks up and down this road for a little bit and then he hops the fence and then he drives off with my car. So bloody got him. And I don't know if that footage was integral in arresting the guy because they did just pull him over with my car red handed. In his backpack, they found my underwear, some jewelry, the dash cam, a few other things. Oh, by the way, not to go on too much of a tangent here, there's a lot of shit. A lot of shit. So I look in my Dropbox. It's a cloud storage service thing. I look in there. And recently, a photo was uploaded. Not video. A photo of Ivy's dash cam. And you can see the green of her hood. And it's the inside of my mechanics, uh, you know, garage. That freaked me right the hell out. And I'm just going to assume, well, I know the police have the dash cam, or so they've said. So maybe a police officer just switched it on, accidentally got it into the cloud storage mode. I don't know. But that was really scary because someone also, after this guy was arrested, you know, he, he dropped off my stuff somewhere. Although, <laughs> so when I saw Ivy for the first time at the towing, uh, the impound lot, the guy who drove me there, he didn't give a shit. And he was just like, oh yeah, that's what they do. Oh, he probably threw your stuff on the road, trying to get away from the cops. It's what they do. They don't give a shit. They just throw all your shit on the road. I went, no, I don't think that's the case. I, I you know, I had, I had other reason to believe. Well, no, he, he stole it to sell it. There's nothing left in the car. This is a little too clean. It's not like he was tossing random things. It's all gone. 
So he obviously dropped that stuff off at some point. Yeah, it's clearly in someone's possession now because someone tried to sign into my Samsung account. And that happened while I was upgrading this laptop. So I was fucked. I, you know, I get this email saying, oh, you've uh, reset your password for your Samsung account. I fuck, I did. And uh, so I'm like, well, I've got my phone. I can try to access things as fast as I can, as much as I can from my phone. But I really need a laptop. I need something with a little bit more power. Not that this thing's very powerful, but it was just very hard to do all that sort of stuff on a phone. And it just felt like I couldn't catch a break. Because here I was struggling with upgrading this laptop because I'd accidentally not unplugged my external hard drive. So then the Windows Create tool just overrode everything in my hard drive. Every, every, all my art, photos, podcasts, backups, everything. Just gone. Because I just didn't unplug it. I'm a fucking idiot. And they didn't tell me, hey, it's going to wipe everything on there. Great. So I'm freaking out about that. Then someone's trying to hack into my Samsung account. It's just, it's bedtime. I'm so tired. I just want it all to stop. And you just keep burying me under more shit. Great. Fuck me. (sighs) It's like I'm a character in a story and the writer is making a concentrated effort to fuck me over. Anyway... A couple of days later, someone tries to download Spotify onto my PlayStation 4. So then I call PlayStation the next day. That's the thing. These people are apparently nocturnal. They always do this stuff about 10 o'clock at night. When I'm about to go to bed, oh, you're trying to get into my PlayStation now. Cool. So then I'm frantically trying to remove all credit card information and everything from that PlayStation. The next morning, I call up Sony and they say, yep, we can trace where that PlayStation was and where that download was made. So here's the case number, give that to police, and we can give them the address. They can't give me the address, vigilante justice and all that, cowards. And uh, yeah, that's where we've been at for about a month now. This detective won't call me back. I think he called me back once when I walked away from the phone for five seconds, and it's not a number you can call back. Then another time he called me back, five minutes after I went to bed, So apparently he's working night shifts, so that's probably why, but I'm getting no feedback. I don't know. They've said, we have found 30 of your items. They're awaiting processing. And every week I call and say, well, can I have them back now? And what are they? Can you tell me what I have? Because if you have now retrieved my PlayStation, then I don't have to buy a new one. If you have a laptop, I don't have to buy a new one, you know? I'm in this state of purgatory. I cannot move on. And I'm still living with this. It's been two months and I've never experienced this, but I normally move on really quick from any problem. But this, no, I'm trapped in this moment over and over again because, well, I don't have my computer. I don't have my PlayStations. I don't have this, that, and the other. I, I'm just constantly reminded of what I'm missing and I can't go out and replace them. And... Not having Ivy is the hardest because I know it sounds ridiculous, but you know, I live alone and she's my whole world. She's the being I turn to for emotional support. You know, I love sitting with her, just the smell of her and the feel. And yeah, I talk to her and I feel better when I do, but she's in here. I go up and, yeah, as I've mentioned, visit her once a week. But it's really not the same thing. <laughs> you can't exactly just sit there in your car uh, at the mechanics. And hopefully, once that clutch is replaced, a few more adjustments, uh, she'll be fine. I can take her home. I can clean her finally. Give her a good buff and wax. That will be nice. But during that time, I was so stressed... I did not have a period for, I think it was like, see, a normal cycle is 28 days. I was about 45 days, somewhere around there. It was about two weeks late. And I went, oh, great. Fuck. This means, because my GP told me, 
if your period's late, that puts you in the danger zone for having a false pregnancy because your body, you know, isn't going into period mode. So it's staying up here and it goes, oh, well, if you're not going into a period, that must be you're pregnant. So, yep, had a pretty bad false pregnancy. I mean, just cramps and, and nausea and abs just feeling absolutely miserable. Um, and then... I also had fluid retention in my face, so I just looked so bloated and puffy, and I I had to go to work like that, and no one really said anything, so I don't know, maybe no one noticed, or they were just being polite. When you are going through a false pregnancy, you are very emotional and hormonal, and so that was just making things ten times worse, and then I additionally felt that I really want children, and I don't know if I'll ever be able to do that, and I've got about five years left before basically I run out of time, and uh, you know the birth defects become a significant risk. But yeah, it's just uh, incredibly lonely. I've never been lonely before, and, and never this profoundly lonely. So that's why I'm making this video, I guess. I, I find it therapeutic more than actual therapy, making these videos. Uh, my disability employment agency, they actually arranged for some phone appointments with a therapist and eh. I mean, it was nice to talk to somebody at least, but yeah, I, I just feel like I'm always having to explain things and hold their hand and they're not really telling me what I should and shouldn't do. But yeah, I was saying the difficulty is when you have this romantic, sexual, physical relationship with a car and you go through something like this where she's taken from you and, well, of course, everyone only treats her like a machine. They only see her as an object that has been stolen. It's not a rape. It's not an abduction. It's just theft of an item that can be replaced, but she can't. There's only one poison ivy. And when I went to visit her the first time that towing out the impound lot, you know, the guy who drove me up to see her, he didn't give a shit. He didn't have any bedside manner, but he didn't have to because normally you wouldn't need to in this circumstance. Although, I don't know, for a lot of people, their car is very precious to them, so it's still very upsetting. But, yeah, that that's made things a lot worse. And again, my mother has a go at me. Oh, well, you know, if you didn't have these unnatural feelings for your car, then it wouldn't matter. Well, no, I think I'd still be pretty fucked up from this situation, even if I didn't have a car. Doesn't make it any easier, but... Um, yeah, so the false pregnancy went on for, I don't know, like two weeks... And finally I got my period, and I think, it wasn't even that I was becoming more relaxed or anything, it was just, I, I don't think it could hold off any longer. And then that was a really weird period. I, I've only missed two days of work so far, and one of them was because of this false pregnancy where, so I got that period when I was at work towards the end of my shift. I was fine for the rest of the day, I actually got a lot of other things done that day. Next morning, hit me like a ton of bricks. I woke up and I just, I could barely open my eyes. I lifted my head. I had really bad vertigo. And I was bleeding really heavily. And then barely anything for the next few days. So it's just thunder period for one day. And then just really spotty for the next few days. But things seemed to sort themselves out. But... I just, I'm completely at the mercy of my emotions now, and I've never had to deal with that before. You know, everyone else has learned to deal with emotions over the course of a lifetime, and here I am as a 30-year-old adult trying to deal with this when I've never had to. I've always been very calm, very stoic, you know, fighter, pilot, confidence, bow hunter, confidence, as Joe Rogan likes to say. And I'm a very confident person. I've definitely, I've not lost my confidence, but it's just my body freaks out with nervousness and anxiety and, you know, I'm just being bombarded with these feelings and 
just these this past week, for whatever reason, I've really hit the lowest point. Even though yeah, Ivy's okay now, false pregnancies passed. There's really nothing wrong, and yet I'm just losing my fucking mind. I and I think I always say the the brain and body are inextricably interwoven, interlinked within cells, interlinked, and it's so every time I have a strong emotion. I deal with inflammation, and if I have inflammation, then mentally I don't feel well either. So I've had to cut back and be really strict with my diet, because um, I was, you know, with the probiotics doing very well. I was reintroducing a little bit of tomato and cucumber. Uh, I was having tea every single day, and now I've had to just do nothing but animal-based foods. Because I just have this huge reaction to everything, and I'm having to take uh, ibuprofen, you know, anti-inflammatories just to sleep because I lie down and all and just whoa, my my muscles and bones feel like they're on fire. Um, and the worst of it was just uh, on Monday. So I had a driving test booked with my driving instructor. Then I get a text out of nowhere saying, "Oh, uh, your, your test being cancelled." rebook online to look online there's nothing and i'm just going why the fuck why have they cancelled it and not giving me any explanation so my driving instructor said oh it's probably because there's a lot of assessors who are sick with covid right now oh okay well that makes sense yeah. so i managed to get a test the day after so i was looking on the website on a sunday and then the very next day at one o'clock there was a test available, nothing else for months, you know, six months that you can book in advance. There's nothing. So just everything that could go wrong did go wrong. So uh, I did, I called up my, the driving instructor's company because he wasn't available that day, but I called and they said, oh yeah, we've got another instructor who was free that day. I went, okay, you know, let's give it a go. Uh, he was driving a Suzuki, which I've never driven before, but a you know, little hatchback piece of crap thing. Uh, how different could it be from a Hyundai? Turns out, different in only one way, in one very, very crucial way. So driving lesson beforehand was okay. I was a little nervous. I was just I was making these rookie mistakes, and I just, yeah, wasn't feeling great. Um... I don't think it was a lack of confidence. It's just my body gets nervous, and then I don't know how to deal with it. Anyway, it's time for the test, and uh, we go up to the car. I sit in there, and uh, it, what they get you to do first is they check your brakes and your indicator lights. So, yeah, okay. So, turn the key. Now, if you've ever driven a car, you know, there's the electricals. Then there's turning the engine on. It's click, click, you know? It's not just click, and the engine's on. Oh, no, no, no. Apparently, Suzuki went, do we really need that? No, actually, let's just turn the engine all the way on. Now, I don't know, maybe it's just that particular car and maybe the ignition's a little worn out so it doesn't sit in that middle spot, but nope, I just touched it lightly. I did not turn the key that hard. Just turned it ever so slightly and... Oh, okay. Well, I, I wasn't even thinking anything of it. But, you know, the engine starts a little bit and I jump a little bit. The hand brakes on, so who cares? So, you know, I'm just still getting ready. Guy walks up to the window and says, um, yeah, unfortunately, we're going to have to cancel the test. I'm like, oh, God, what's going on now? What? And he said, oh, because you didn't have control of the car. Yes, I absolutely had fucking control of the car. Anyway, I go ape shit at this guy. I am screaming at him. I'm saying, fuck you. I, you know, and I do. I think it, it it's fucked that you pay all that money every single time i do a test it's three hundred dollars so it's a hundred and seventy dollars i think for the driving instructor so you do an hour lesson and then you are basically hiring his car for the next half hour or so and then you gotta pay a hundred dollars just to do the test and i just I, that's ridiculous it's too much it's too much money that is an insane amount to expect people to pay and I was just saying, well, what, so we can't even just do the test? Even if I failed, you can't even just let me run through a 
trial version of it. No. And, you know, normally I might, after that, feel apologetic, like, oh, maybe that was out of line. No. I have just been nonstop angry for days now. I am fucking furious. I have had enough. And I, I said it to this guy, you have no idea what I've been through in these past few months. Could you not just fucking give me this, this one fucking thing? No, didn't give a shit. He just went, I have nothing more to say to you, and then walked off. Uh, at least the driving instructor, I don't know if you heard everything, but he said, I'll, I'll only charge you for our lesson. I won't charge you the full 170. Thank God. But yeah, I, I know rationally I should probably feel bad because that guy didn't really do anything wrong. Although it was, it was in his power. It was within his power to help me out. He could have just looked the other way. There was nothing stopping him. And uh, yeah, no, I'm still fucking furious and I don't give a shit. And I'm still up there, just feeling pure rage and fury. I, I thought I had experienced anger before, but no, I, I'm i feeling it for real now, where I'm just so, where I'm just so profoundly primal and furious, and there, there's no higher order reasoning or logic there, it's just I'm fucking pissed and I don't care who's in my way. And so, yeah, I guess this year, learning emotions has been a real trial by fire, throwing me in the deep end, the most intense sadness and, and fear, and then rage. At least the rage is a welcome change. It's very motivating. You want to get out there, do things, punch people, set things on fire. <laughs> now, you know, I'm still in control of myself, but... I just don't feel right. I feel angry all the time. I can't enjoy things the way I used to. At work, I don't feel right either. Um, like just having conversations with people, you know, it's a lovely place I work at, and everyone's very nice, and we're, we're like a family. And you know, people are being playful with me, and I just sort of look up and I go, "Oh, oh, right, you were just joking." Yeah. Um, so I've always got my headphones. Most people have their headphones when they're working there. Um, a furniture upholsterer. And yeah, uh, like someone will just playfully tap me or try to get my attention. And I'll just, oh, yep, yeah, what do you need? And they'll just be joking and playing around. And it's like, oh, oh, okay. And I know I should, you know, laugh or, you know, normally I'm, I'm, I'm going to... I like improv. I, I will play off the other person. I will match their energy, but I just can't. And even making small talk, I don't even know how to talk to people, my coworkers, where whenever anyone asks me how I'm doing these days, I just say, yeah, fine. I, d I just don't want to go into it anymore. I just don't want to talk about it. I, I, I'm just so fucking over it, all of it. <laughs> but importantly, I'm not suicidal. I don't think I'm depressed. I'm just traumatized. I'm angry. I'm frustrated. I've gone through a lot of things. I'm feeling incredibly powerless. And I feel like I'm being punished that I've gone through so, so much detransitioning, false pregnancies, autoimmune diseases, all of that shit. And I buy this car and she is everything and she brings me so much joy and she, she can give me so much freedom and, and bring me into the adult world finally. She makes me feel alive and then some shitter just fucking takes her away. For no good reason. Just because they wanted to. <sighs> so, yeah, lately, um, yeah, a lot of stomach issues. Sleep is okay. I've actually been sleeping more. I'll, I'll come home from work some days and then I'll just sleep until after sundown. And then I'll get up and just go, what year is it? Oh God, I don't know where I am. Um, but no, today I'm feeling okay. Came home, had lunch, cleaned the house, filming a video. So, I don't know, maybe just talking and getting out of my system is helping, but it's just very concerning that every time I have an emotion, my body's going to react like this. Is that always going to be the case? And I've also been dissociating more. I feel like in a way, Connor is coming back. Connor was the 
robot personality that I assumed when I was a trans man. And under the influence of, of testosterone, I was dissociating and, and forming this delusional identity. And now I'm realizing it's just, it's dissociation and it's this weird disconnect between brain and body. And I think, yeah, especially nowadays, I'm having this huge disconnect between brain and body because I'm so ill. I mean, at least I've, I've been going to work every single day, so I'm not as sick as I used to be. But yeah, I, like I, I find myself just moving around in a more robotic way, and I'm more aware of myself sometimes. And like, it's that, it's kind of like lag, where I'm just slowly picking something up in a very precise way. And it, I don't know. It's just like I'm trying to control my body by remote control from the other side of a room. It's just yeah, I don't know what that is. Probably inflammation, brain inflammation, encephalitis, if you will. So that's about everything that I've I've endured for the past few months. It's only April. If the rest of the year is like this, I don't know if I'm going to make it. But I'm a fighter. I'm a survivor. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to work harder. <laughs> to quote Destiny's Child. But um, yeah, you know, I'm not depressed. I'm not just... I don't feel at all like I want to give up. Every time something's thrown my way, I just want to fight harder and I get angrier and I push back harder. And speaking of the anger, yeah, it makes it harder to, to just relate to people because I'm just so... I, I'm not snapping at people, but on the inside, I feel like, God, it's fucking annoying. And I, I just... God, you're so stupid. Fuck you. Just, in my head, I'm, I'm thinking that about a lot of people... Even though they've done nothing wrong, I know consciously. I've got enough restraint to just go, I know I'm salty right now, but I don't need to let anyone else know that. I I'm just going to keep on fighting, keep on trying to get my life on track, which I was trying to do. I was doing very nicely. Thank you very much, you fucking prick burglar. Everything was so fine, so perfect, no complaints. I, uh, now... Yeah. You know, and I feel like, on the other hand, is this really so bad? You know, why am I blowing this so out of proportion? Why am I so upset? You know, it was just a burglary, and everything came back to me. Or most things were retrieved. The most important thing was retrieved. Um, you know, just move on, get over it. But no, I, I'm realizing emotions don't work that way. I just feel fucking furious all the time. I think that about covers it, and, and thanks to everyone who's been sending me messages lately, and uh, a friend of mine sent me flowers, and it's just been really lovely to know that I'm not alone. I felt very isolated and lonely lately, but yeah, I, I'm surrounded by people, even total strangers, who, who care? So, until next time, see you, Space Cowboy. <laughs>